What's up, everybody? On this episode of the Sooner the Better podcast, Will Smith, is he a slap god or a beta male? Stuck in enemy territory, what it's like being an OU fan in the heart of Texas, and me and Blake's regular season game predictions. Boomer. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Right. Here how we about are. how about that intro video? Um, we made it. Yeah, we did. We, we did. Welcome, welcome everybody to episode one of the Sooner the Better video podcast. Vlog? Is it a vlog? vlog? Are we vlogging? We're doing something. Anyway, obviously we're here in the studio today. We're live. We're together. Usually we're separate. Um, this is this is this is as far as our as our decorating abilities go. Yeah, we got my he, dusty old OU sign right here. When he said studio, it's my living room. But, uh, uh, yep. But, yeah. but good enough, we got a ring light. Anything's, so anything's a studio right. if you make it a studio. So getting right into it. New business. Will Smith. We all know what happened. Um, I'm the slap, beginning to feel like a slap god. Slap yeah, god. He, uh, the slap heard round Hollywood, round the world. The question is, Will Smith, is he, is he a slap god or is he a beta male? Um, who, who's in the wrong here? Who's so, in the wrong here? My thing is, I think this is a multivariate problem, really, when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris Rock made a joke. <laughs> it wasn't a very good joke. Like, let's let's be honest. It wasn't really that funny. No, it was just. But it was like it was it just was... a joke. It was stupid. I think it, I don't even think it was meant to be like a big punchline. Like I think it was just like an in passing joke that he threw in, and. So, like, fine, whatever. Will Smith was laughing at it at first. Yep. And and then it panned away, and, you know, Jada gave him that, that you if, better, if you don't, if you yep. don't do something about this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sleep with someone else tonight. Yeah, you know, you and know you know she, she will. You know yeah, she, she will. Yeah, she does that. And does. Uh, so I think then he got up. You can't go slap somebody. You, you just can't do it. You can't slap somebody, especially – on national TV with millions of people watching, you can't slap somebody and oh. just because someone said something that made you mad. I mean, you're not supposed to slap people in general. No, um, it's illegal. Let alone, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's assault. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was an innocent joke in passing. Uh, much worse jokes have been made on TV. Definitely. Um, it's not like he was making fun of the fact that she had alopecia. It's not like he was like, ha-ha, you, you literally can't grow hair. He was basically just saying... Like oh like, like you yeah, could be GI Jane. Jane. So I mean yeah. the joke wasn't that bad. Will Smith was laughing at it. Um, I think there's some Illuminati stuff at play as, as as to why he actually went up there and slapped him. But I'm not 100 percent sure. But really a beta male move on both guys' parts in my opinion. Beta male of Will Smith to go up there and slap him for a joke like that, and uh, beta male of Chris Rock to not do anything about it. No, see I actually have to commend Chris Rock because. You know the amount of restraint it took for him to a not hit him back, and and I gotta say, just like going over, Will Smith, he needs to work on his slap game. He's a lot bigger than Chris Rock. He should have been able to at least knock him down with a slap, even if it is open hand. Like he should have been able to at least knock him down or knock him back. Yeah. Chris Rock ate that like a champ. He kind of gave it. He kind of gave it one of those like it, it, it was like great, but it was loud, but it was grazing. He kind of yeah. gave it one of those. Weaves, but Chris Rock has an insane amount of composure to be able to take that, not dish anything back, and also not because you could tell because they had the audio from some of the international uh, recordings because they bleeped everything in in the U.S. Um, but you can you can tell Chris Rock had some jokes, had some quips that he was about ready to fire out, and you know it, there was an entanglement joke coming up yeah and he held back and he was very professional i gotta i'm For team sure. chris rock 100 i love will smith yeah i think he's a great actor i think he's amazing but dude he's got to get out of that relationship yeah man. i used to he's, I simping. Used, he's simping hard i did yeah i used to have a lot more respect for for, uh, for will smith um until he did what he did at the oscars but here's the thing entanglement jokes about him and jada have been made before but by female comedians and that's the difference that's why i think it's beta male movies because People have made way worse jokes about him and his wife. And he doesn't do anything. He doesn't no. do shit. 
Um, but the second there's a guy out there that he thinks he can manhandle, he walks up there and does something about it, which that's the thing. All of our hosts from here on out, all of our male hosts at the Oscars have to be just the scariest guy. If Mike Tyson was the host, if the, both both Mike Tyson. other you know prominent black actors, black gentlemen, um, you know he's not going to go up there and slap Mike. There goes our hat. Yeah. Sick. Um, but anyway, he's not going to go up there and slap Mike Tyson because he's going to he's going to get his face broken. Um, but that, that that's I digress. That's that's all I have yeah. on the Will Smith subject. Yeah, um, it's pretty much all that's been on Instagram, TikTok for the past since it happened. Yeah, I mean, all in all, it's really not that big of a deal. It doesn't affect my life. No. It doesn't affect your life. It doesn't really affect anybody listening's life. I would have sued though. Yeah, I would have sued for yeah. for a few yeah. million bucks. Um, so moving on, actual sports talk now. Uh, we have the final four coming up today. Actually, both both games later tonight. The final four, man, I. I hate it. I hate it. It Why, sucks. It's blue bloods? I suck. It's all blue blood programs. We got Villanova, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina. Um, I'm not a big fan of like the the traditional blue blood programs. The one that I like the most is Villanova, just because of like the success that they've had recently and what they've been able to do, um, and the fact that they're not technically like a traditional blue blood. They're considered one of the new blood programs, which doesn't make much sense to me they've won you know almost a third of the national championships in the last six years no. so I'm pulling for them I it just can't be Duke it can't be Duke yeah so my my prediction because I was I was riding the St. Pete's train hard but that dream sickles done melted yeah it was um, a good run it was a good, a good run. run great run uh they got absolutely manhit though they did they know yeah. which is surprising though because the two teams that they beat Kentucky had just a dominant win over North Carolina in the regular season. And Purdue, I mean, at one point was ranked, yeah. you know, one, two, three. So Doug just, he flamed out. He lost his fire. Um, but, Poor yeah, Doug. so now now I got, I actually have NC uh, against Nova. Okay. In the, in the championship. Okay. Um, and then it's a, it's a coin toss there. I don't really care anymore at this point. I haven't watched I, the I games. Don't, oh. I, don't, I don't give a shit. No, um, I don't care. As long as it's not Duke. I'm sorry. Like, I know a lot of people love Coach K. I respect Coach K. Um, but there's a lot of stuff floating around about him. Some very negative rumors that I believe are, like, partially true about him treating student reporters badly. Talking shit, like, to the faces of opposing pl- Like, not talking shit like, oh, we just, you know, whatever. But, like, when Duke loses, he's, a, he's apparently a very sore loser. And when he, lo- like, he'll go up and, like, shake hands with some of the players, but then, like, basically, like, throw shit at them, like, whisper in their ear. And then, like, but then portray it to the media like he was telling them how good of a game that they had, um, which I can believe that. So, yeah, I don't care as long as it's not Duke. It just can't be Duke. Yeah. That's all we got on that. Um, so we were going to do a segment with uh, listener opinions from last week's Take It or Leave It segment about um, quarterbacks that we would take – Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield over. over. Um, coincidentally, we we picked that we would take Baker over all of them. Yeah, and uh, no no bias there, <laughs> no bias there whatsoever. But nobody nobody responded. <laughs> Come on, guys. No one no one on Twitter took the bait. Do better. Yeah, give us like when we ask for takes. Like I don't care if it's like we're controversial or whatever. We we want your takes so even that we can share agree them. With us. We won't even call you out. We won't even put your Twitter handle uh, in the podcast. We just want to have some like basis of discussion. Okay, so fortunately we're not going to be able to do that segment <laughs> today. So we're moving on. So as most of you know by now, probably maybe they probably didn't. Live, they probably weren't paying attention. But we live in Dallas, Texas. That's where we are right now. So we are heart. pretty much right in the. The very heart of Texas. So I wanted to do a little segment and talk a little bit to the Oklahoma Sooner fans that live in Oklahoma about what it's like being a Sooner fan in enemy territory in the heart yeah. of Texas. Yeah, so I have some of my f- fondest and earliest memories because I moved here. We moved here when I was in like second grade and diehard OU fan. And w- what's interesting is you do have a decent number of OU fans, I think, because Dallas is kind of the biggest city in between Austin and Norman. Like, you get a decent mix of, of OU fans, of Texas fans. You get some Texas A&M fans, which, I mean, they're just absolutely batshit crazy. Um, a cult school that they go to in, in College Station. Gig. But we, uh, 
No, I mean it was always it was always very interesting. Like I remember one time I had a, I had an English teacher in fifth grade. Her name was Miss Howe. Uh, if she's still alive, I doubt she's listening to this. But <laughs> probably not. No, probably not. That would be the. She weird. could be dead. <laughs> she hopefully, very, she, hopefully she's not dead. <laughs> she she very could, well could. She be. could be dead. She was old. Uh, but she was a diehard Texas fan, and I remember we had uh, we had a bet going when. Uh, that year during the OU Texas game, and you know, I mean, I think Texas ended up beating us that year. I don't remember what year it was, like two thousand four, two thousand three, something like that. But I think Texas ended up winning, and oh, it was just hell in class all day. She was just like berating me and no. just like pissing on my desk. <laughs> uh, she didn't actually do that, Did but she slap you? Met- metaphorically, yeah, she will. Will Smith slapped me. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's always interesting. You always are hated because people in Texas just love to say that o- that Oklahoma sucks. They, you know, why, why does Texas not fall into the Gulf of Mexico? Because oh, you suck so bad. And it's like, okay, well, you know what? It's also because Mexico's fucking you in the ass, if you're going by that logic, <laughs> right? You got you got Mexico hitting you from the back while OU's giving you top. So, I mean, at least be, at least, at least be honest. Um, Wouldn't it be Texas... What? Giving OU top? No, OU's giving the top. I guess. I don't. I don't think we want to be giving the top. No, we don't. We don't, we, don't, we don't want it's to. It's the other way around. We don't want anyway, to. All right. But I'm just saying, if if you're using the logic like OU sucks and that's why Texas doesn't float into the Gulf of Mexico, it's like okay, well, Mexico is also hitting you from all right. hitting you from the back <laughs> from the bottom like they're coming in hot we're done discussing the <laughs> diagnostics of what texas OU and or texas oklahoma and mexico are doing so i put together a a, a um, comprehensive list of, of cons and pros so i'm gonna go cons first because i'd say there's more negative than there yeah, is positive definitely. um number one obviously we're in the minority um Pretty much everywhere you go, there's going to be more UT fans than there are OU fans. You're going to get your select few, which is that's one of the pros. Is like you see somebody else wearing OU gear, and you're like, hey, yeah, you're my the, boy. the OU, you know, the OU tag on the back. Yeah, of your and you car are and you're boomer, like, and they know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more UT fans, and they take every opportunity to remind you that OU still sucks, even though we yeah. absolutely boot stomped them um, what the last four years, and. Uh, you know they can't pull out a over 500 season to save their life. No. Um, and then other than that, people get butt hurt. UT fans really easily get butt hurt. Like they'll they'll talk the most shit to you. Oh they'll yeah. They'll be like, oh, you still suck. And one time I had this girl. She was a UT fan, and she was like on her way to go to UT. She was transferring from the college I went to to UT. She was like, oh, you still sucks. And I started talking shit. Obviously football related because that's that's the only thing that matters. And she's like. Well, UT's better academically. Who fucking asked? No, no one cares. No one cares how studious you guys are. No one cares about your research. No one cares about any of that. It's about football. It's all about football. The only thing you have is Matthew McConaughey. That's all they have. All right, all right. And that's pretty cool. I wish, I'm not going to lie. I would trade. We have Tim McGraw. No, I, Toby but, Keith. Toby Keith. I, I, would, I would trade Toby Keith for Matt. Is Tim McGraw the Australian one? <laughs> no, that's Keith Urban. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know country music. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, and then, and then just the nicknames. Um, we got a lot of nicknames that people here like to throw at us. We got the Gooners, which I personally like that one. That one's kind of hard. I, if we were to change our name from the Sooners to the Gooners, I would... I've never heard that one before. Oh, I, I get the... Well, it's mostly a social media thing. Uh, um Gooner, and it's, it more so comes from OSU fans, actually, I feel like, Oklahoma oh, State okay. fans. Uh, know You is one that I get a lot, um, especially my, my friends' parents who are, you know, UT fans. They always call it Know You when they're around me. And then the paper clips, because of our, so our logo, as you can see, it looks, it does, it does somewhat resemble a paper clip. I'll credit you there. I've never really noticed um, that before, but yeah. But it, it, you know, to me, it's better than just the plain white, um, shitty shitty longhorn logo um and then in terms of the pros though obviously um god good lord just, put it. just yeah I'm, I'm wearing it for this yeah <laughs> this is staying on the rest of the episode um in terms of pros though obviously you have more people to rub it in the face of every year when we whoop texas's ass yep. 
um, you, you get you feel a little sense of exclusivity like there's not many OU fans here so you walk around with like this or especially when we're playing good you walk around with this aura of like you know even though I don't play for OU or <laughs> I really have aside from the fact that I'm a fan no association yeah. with OU whatsoever neither of us went there yep. um, our dad did oh. so but yeah so it feels nice and exclusive and uh, you feel like a genius amongst idiots um, I'm surprised that Texas fans can read for how good they're supposed to be academically, they're they're kind of stupid people. Well, so in fairness to the University of Texas, most of the people who are fans of them did not go there and could not go there, even yeah. if they wanted to. Um, I will give I will give the University of Texas at Austin this. It is a very good school academically, um, but they get a lot of fans that. Um, Really, they don't have any association with them either, other than they live in the state of Texas, which is the size of a small country. So, I mean, very loose, um, yeah, very loose connections. Yeah, and they're they're just super delusional about football. I've yeah. been I've been reading some things that they they think they're going to beat Bama next year. They think they're going to win the Big Twelve. Um, no, they think Quinn Ewers is going to be you know the second coming of of Christ. Sam Ellinger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I think he's going to be um, without the running ability. But anyway, um, speaking of that, speaking of Texas fans' delusions, uh, there's the, there's been this trend on Twitter that I've been seeing where they seem to think that we're going to be the Nebraska of the SEC, which is, which is funny considering I would say that they are currently the Nebraska, the Nebraska of the Big 12. <laughs> Um, obviously, very similar records. They went uh, what five and seven. Nebraska went three and nine. So you're talking about a two game difference. Yeah. Uh, and Texas lost to Kansas at home in Austin. They lost to Kansas. We almost lost to Kansas, but we didn't lose to Kansas. Okay. <laughs> Texas lost to Kansas. You, this Texas fans, we didn't. You lost to Kansas. Um, so I just I find the irony um, really really hilarious. Uh, yeah. but, but, but my basis of comparison to Texas to Nebraska in terms of play is poo poo defenses uh -huh. and no QB. Yeah, I mean the only difference is Texas gets five star talent and Nebraska doesn't. They yep. get you know low four star, high three star talent. Yeah. But that's just that's just worse for Texas because they just <laughs> get all this talent and then they just piss it away. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I'm not too worried about us yeah. becoming the Nebraska. Of the SEC, if I was, if I were them, I would be more concerned about them becoming Missouri 2.0. I, I think they're going to be probably the Kansas of the SEC. I mean, well, no, the, Vanderbilt's the Kansas of the SEC, dude. You got to understand. Here's the thing. Obviously, we get out recruited by Texas every year. So do a lot of schools. They had the yeah. fifth ranked recruiting class of 2022, but. They never do anything with it. It's not like the, it's not like this is like a this is unusual for them to get this high of a recruiting class. They get one every year, and they never do anything with it. So why should we even factor that into the equation when we're talking about how good they're going to play this upcoming season? Because it doesn't fucking matter. Their O line is going to be decent, um, but that's about it. I really don't think Quinn Ewers is going to be all that great, and um, I don't think their coaching is great. I don't think Steve Sarkeesian's the guy. So, I don't think Sark's bad, but I, I think I think Texas's problems go way deeper than just their head coach. Because I mean they've had decent people in that head yeah. coaching position. Yeah. I think I think with Texas, you're talking about front office, you're talking about AD, you're talking about issues with donors and alumni. Like I think that runs mm, donors way deeper. is a good point. You want to know? It seems like, and this is this is strange that this is this is how it shakes out that the teams that rely the most on money. Are never the best teams. That's it's crazy how that shakes out. I mean, I'm I, I think Alabama <laughs> spends quite a bit of money. Oh, I mean, they spend quite, but not they don't spend A and M money. <laughs> no, not even close. I'd say less. I'd say less than half. I don't know about. I mean, where, dude, A and M spends a lot of money. Where, where are you getting which, these numbers? A, a and M spends a lot of money, which is a, a great segue into our next uh, our next piece of news here. Levy Silverton was supposed to come visit. Um, during the spring game. I don't know if you've seen. Um, no. He committed yesterday early on ESPN2 at approximately 3 p.m. And uh, we, all, we all know where he went. He went to A&M. Oh. Um, he committed to A&M. It was, it was unfortunate, 
but they got him the do the dollar signs he he probably got a call and was like hey we're we'll pay you 60 g's right now to not go to the ou spring game and uh i mean i'm, I'm sure yeah, that's how the phone call with probably. jimbo went here's the thing though money is alluring to everyone i'm not going to sit here and say that i wouldn't consider money as a factor if i was a highly touted high school recruit but when you're talking about a m that is their hey jasper this is Blake's dog, everyone. This is Jasper. He's decided to make. He's decided to make an on camera he, appearance. He's our first guest. He's our he's our special guest. What what, what do you what, what, what do, do you, you think? think about the Lebius Silverton commitment? Nice, sick. Well, he can chill here as long as he doesn't make any noise. Hi, buddy. Um, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> here's the thing, though. That's their what fourth, fifth star defensive line recruit. I mean. Only, only so few of them can play, Yeah. right? So if you're going to go and you're going to take that money, obviously, yes, you're going to get that payday. But <laughs> you better hope, you better be shaking my hand. Um, <laughs> you better hope that, <laughs> you better hope that when it comes to your time, you're one of the best three defensive linemen on that roster. Because otherwise, um, you know you're going to get pushed to the side, and you're going to get you're going to get caught up in the position competition, and you're not going to get to play, and it's going to hurt your hurt your NFL stock, which yeah. ultimately is the goal for most of these guys. There you go, buddy. Um, that was that was that was just adorable. Um, <laughs> anything else? Um, no, I mean I didn't think we were going to get him in the first place. I thought the Probably his visit to OU was just to see if he could get more out of A and M, like just to keep it a little bit up in the air. Um, but like you said, they probably offered him a Mercedes just to not, just to not go and go ahead and make his commitment. Um, you know, I mean, as far as I, I think our, you know, draft class looks pretty good. Um, or not draft class, but recruiting class looks. Oh, pretty I'm, not, good. I'm not hurting about and our recruiting so, class at all. So, you know, I mean, it would have been nice, but it is what yeah. it is. So what, bro? You missed out. You missed out. You could have been part of something special, man. You could have been part of something special. Um, so moving on from that, poor news. Um, we're doing a new segment. We're doing a new segment. This is going to be a regular thing. Um, what's up? Oh, I was just seeing, I, I was looking at your notes to see what you... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So that, yeah, that makes sense. So we, we don't know what each other's are, but we're doing a top three of the week. So we're just going to take like three, it really doesn't even have to be sports related, we're just going to take our top three pieces of news or storylines or narratives from the week, and uh, we're just going to go and, and discuss ours. So do you, you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Um, you can go first. Okay, That's, cool. Or, or do you want to do, do, do one at a time, like start with your number one? Yeah, yeah, let's do it like, like do we're it like exchanging that. gifts. Yeah. yeah. So... I want to talk about the NFL overtime rules. So I was very excited when I when I got the notification that um, the NFL had changed their overtime rules to guarantee both offenses a possession in the first overtime, right? So it works just like college rules. If you kick a field goal, the other team can then have the opportunity to score or tie it with the field goal. But here's here's the stupid thing, and this is I, I, as I read into it more, I realized that the NFL is ran by idiots because. After the first OT, so assuming that the, 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 that the OT rules do what they're supposed to do, and both teams do get their possession, and they score, right? Because it's supposed to allow both teams to score a touchdown so that, you know, first score doesn't win the game, right? Assuming that that rule works and it accomplishes what it's supposed to accomplish, it then goes back to the regular NFL rules. So with the, third, the, the second overtime, the first team to score wins. So essentially, it does nothing. It just... It just it just it's going to increase the amount yeah. of, of second overtimes that we're going to see throughout the season or not even throughout the season because it only it's applies only in playoffs. playoffs yeah so it's just stupid it's just why not just change the rules and make that the rule they need to for just every single overtime. college for all the things that college football gets wrong college football's overtime is the best it's the best overtime in any sport because it does it's almost like it's almost like penalty kicks in soccer mm -hmm. like it's like you get your shot to come back and answer and then it's just whoever is able to survive so you end up yeah every once in a while you end up with a college game that goes into four overtimes or five yeah. overtimes but it's exciting the entire time because you you're putting them on the 25 to start 
and you know there's probably going to be some sort of score. So you're, you're getting to see points, but it's, okay, are we able to punch it into the end zone? Are we going to have to settle for a field goal? God forbid we get a, a takeaway that's going to completely blow it. Like So it, it makes it more interesting. I think yeah, no. NFL overtime, especially with offenses as high-powered as they are now, um, it's it's a really stupid overtime. Yeah, no. And I mean, with the with the college, if you just make it college rules, it not only like it makes it a more competitive game when you get into OTs. It also just completely changes the dynamic because the way the NFL works is the team that gets the ball has a million percent advantage. The, the oh, first yeah. team to get the ball, like they 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 completely set the tone of the OT. With college rules, it's almost the opposite. The team that defers. It yeah, doesn't have to score do. first. They get an advantage because they know exactly how many points they have to score to either tie the game or win it. Yeah, but it's not like an over-the-top advantage. No, it's, it's not. It's a strategic advantage, and that's it. Yeah, it just in like the information that you have in the, like, the game scenario. But, yeah, no, the, the, the new OT rules, they almost had it. They, they got so, so close to fixing it, um, but they didn't do everything that they needed to do. And that rule change has already been approved. It's going to take effect. Um, this upcoming year, I just wish they had just done it with some finality and just completely switched it to college rules. Because, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of things that the NFL gets right, but the overtime rules is absolutely awful. All right. My nose is itchy. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. So my top three, uh, <laughs> I, did, I did it a little weird. I'm actually going to edit it a bit. Um, Um, my top three not, not are not necessarily all good things. I Was just that one of yours? The, Did I steal one of yours? No. Um, okay. It's just three things that I think are like important. So the first one is a good one. Um, the Greek freak, Giannis, the most dominant player in basketball. Disagree, but okay. Uh, it's, I think it's kind of. I disagree, but okay. I'll get. I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to my point um, on that later. Greek freak passed Kareem as the highest scoring buck. Of all time, um, with a, uh, I believe it was an overtime win against the Nets. He hit a, a last second three pointer and uh, put him over Kareem's Kareem's scoring totals with the Bucks. They won that game. I thought KD hit a game winner. Did he? I thought I thought he did. I thought I saw that KD hit like some insane game winner. I'm not gonna lie. I don't watch the NBA at the buzzer. Uh, hmm. But I thought that was pretty cool. I think, I think without a doubt, the Greek freak is the most dominant basketball player right now. I don't think he's – because he's not necessarily a super um, – he's gotten more versatile, but he's not the most versatile player in the world. Mm-hmm. But the dude is just an absolute monster. Like he, no, he's he, a physical swallows, he swallows boards. He can score now pretty much at all levels. Um, he he's got the he can finish at the rim. He has the mid range game, and he started to develop his three point shooting more. Um, I think he's gonna once LeBron finally retires, if he ever fucking retires. Um, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. He's gonna pull Tom. He's gonna, he's gonna retire and come straight back and after after a couple of weeks. I don't know. I think if the <laughs> base basting in the. I think if the Lakers, I think if the Lakers don't make the playoffs, I think he's going to strongly consider. Just oh, they're like, they're already out. They're they're, they? they're guaranteed out of the playoffs. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I I don't know that he. I don't think he'll come back to L.A. Hope. Yeah. And I think there's a chance that he could just hang it up. L.A. is a shit show for um, sure. But no, I think Giannis is going to take over as the face of the NBA. Um, he's just he's really good. Yeah, I mean, in terms of guys to build your franchise around right now, Giannis is like. Top three for sure. Um, so I'm going to do my second one now. You done? Yeah, you don't have anything else other than yeah. Cool. Okay. Giannis, everybody. Uh, my next one is OU softball. Um, the reason I put OU softball in there is because right after we recorded last week, they had a very, very close game in their third game against Baylor because obviously they play the, the conference games and series. Their third game against Baylor. They were down 1-0 at the bottom of the seventh. So last half inning, two outs, two on base. And uh, I can't remember who it was now. Somebody got up there, man. One (laughs) of of those girls that hits bombs got up there and just slams one and hits this walk-off home run to win the game. And they've just been down at 11, you know, run-ruling everybody. 
there's nothing really more to say on it than they're just like they're, they're they might be one of the best college teams yeah just college teams period in general to ever play no. college sports like they're they're they haven't lost a game they're probably not going to lose a game they're going to win a national championship and they've hit more home runs than you know anybody so all right yeah i i'm i, I fucks yeah. with it that's my number two uh my number two uh is the mlb banning the shift so that was something that came into effect they finally worked out all their mlb pa stuff i think i'm more of a baseball fan than you are um, yeah for sure i i enjoy baseball i play baseball uh, i don't i like so it boring um but they banned the shift so the shift basically for anyone who doesn't know it was something that they started doing a couple seasons ago where because of data analytics you know where what everybody's tendencies are and so on left-handed hitters primarily what they would do is move the the second baseman would basically shift over or shift back and play like a shallow right field and then you'd have the shortstop shift over to play basically where second normally plays and then third would play where like the shortstop plays so you essentially have this entire third of the field where there's just nobody covering it but because left-handed hitters tend to pull the ball so much statistically you end up on top because anything short of a home run is an out um and it was something that they did uh joey gallo former ranger went to the yankees awesome ranger F- fuck the yankees fuck that guy yeah fuck um her. He was he was a big complainer about the shift because he was really bad about pulling the ball. Um, so they banned it and hitting him so high. Yeah, he had he had the highest um, like like ball apex of yeah. any hitter in the MLB. He would just hit these like giant rainbows. It's no. crazy. But anyway, they banned it, so now you're not allowed to do it. I don't know what the exact rules are, but I know that left-handed hitters and I'm a left-handed hitter. So, uh, but I know how to hit the ball into the other other side of the field if I have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I that that's a good change, I believe. Um, another good change, in my opinion, is the pitch clock that they that they have now added because that was one of my biggest complaints in baseball is the amount of time between pitches. It just it's it's what makes the games last, you know, sometimes four and a half hours, which yeah. they just don't need to. Um, so the pitch clock is, and what it does is it, like it, it forces these teams to use their bullpens. Like you've yeah. got nine guys in your bullpen. All with healthy arms. You don't need to only be playing once or twice a week. Like, I know that they have shoulder surgeries and whatever, and a lot of them have issues, but it's like, it's like, bro, you're getting paid millions of dollars. You can play more than once a week. You know, if the pitch clock is affecting your arm, put in the next guy. You don't just need a starter and a closer. Like, you can use four or five pitchers a game. You have nine people. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big fan of the pitch clock. I wish they would bring back juicing. I wish they'd yeah. let the players no, juice, no. but then let the pitchers use... Uh, the pine tar. So we got crazy ball movement, but if one it's of these like giants that's MLB taking steroids, <laughs> yeah, if one of the giants doing steroids gets a hold of it, it's it's flying. So yeah, your steroids need to come back. Baseballs, the, literally the only thing that's saving baseball right now is Shohei Otani. Um, yeah, Showtime. Other than that, baseball, I do got to say, has gotten boring. Um, they need to let them juice. Why I not? think it can, who, who, I, it's who's such a get hurt. Get hurt Unlike juicing. every other league now, it, it it heavily favors defensive play. I think. Yeah, I would. That's, at least that's how I see. It. That's why I don't like well, watching it. No, it's it's definitely gotten more offensive because uh, you have a lot more teams that are scoring five six runs a game. Um, you have some games that are going double digits on both sides. So I, I would say that I would say that it's it's more offensive than it used to be. Like when I watched growing up um, yeah. but yeah I bring back juicing why not you just want to see juice. my thing is I don't even necessarily want to see more home runs you just want to see more balls in play well that's right? that's another thing for a while it was so it was so everything's got to be a home run and I think the Japanese influence kind of came in a little bit more and they play more small ball over in Japan yeah. um, and I think that influence kind of has come in a little bit to where small balls become more of a thing. And to me, that's more interesting to watch because then you are in like positional situations where, okay, you've got a runner at second, a runner at third. You don't necessarily want to be swinging for the fences in that case. You just want to put a ball in play so that you can bring your runner in. Um, anyway, baseball. 
Yeah, no, they're 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 making some positive changes that might that might get me interested. It might get me interested in watching it again. Um, my third and final one. This obviously is contrary to what you were saying about Giannis. Nikola Jokic is the best player in the NBA. <laughs> he's the best player in the NBA. It's not even close. He's going back to back MVP. Twenty six and a half points per game, shooting fifty eight percent from the field. 13.6 rebounds per game, 8 assists per game, 81% from the free throw line, 1.4 steals per game compared to only 3.8 turnovers. That is like that is a monster stat line. For the for those of you who don't know basketball stats, that is insane. No, the Joker is and I think it's funny because we went through such an era previously to where Basketball was so dominated by Smalls. It was so. It was James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Steph Curry. LeBron was always there, obviously. But like Dame Dalla. Those Dame. It was. It was very. It was a guard because everyone's shooting threes. Everyone's doing whatever. And I think it's funny that now it's kind of shifted. Where who are the who are the three best players in the league right now? They're all big guys. It's Giannis. It's Joker and Embiid. And then you could put Luca in there, which Luca for a a guard a two three hybrid is a yeah. big dude like yeah, he's, no, not, he's, he's not small I mean, six seven yeah 220 pounds, so i, I do like think that. it's funny that it's it's kind of shifted back to a big centric league yeah no and it's it's even crazier because i don't even think nikola Jokic fits the mold of like a normal big either he's not an athletic slasher like Giannis, and he's not like Embiid where he's just going to get the ball and like his footwork's crazy good and mixed with his le- he's just He's just, his his hooks crazy. Oh, his he's, passing is his jump. He's 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 the best passing big man in basketball. He can shoot from all levels of the floor, um, and then obviously just with his size, he's naturally going to be a good rebounder. And then to have that free throw percentage, um, you know, usually amongst those bigger guys, it's I mean, definitely better than Giannis's. Um, yeah. See, free throws win championships. You're always talking about def- free throws win championships. So, in my mind, Nikola Jokic, best player in basketball right now. Obviously, doesn't look it. He's not a very athletic-looking guy. He's kind of big and pudgy, but like, <laughs> there's just something about the way he plays that gets him, that gets him, uh, gets him these monster stats. And then on Luca, obviously we're Dallas guys. I'm a big Dallas Mavs fan. Luca doesn't really fit a mold either, does he? Like, there's I don't know. I don't know that I've ever seen a guard play. He he, he, he plays really very guard, slowly. He is, but he's like he's not like. I'm gonna make these super quick moves and slash and pet. He's like very slow and methodical. He's like he doesn't have a super quick crossover. No, but he can just his step away, his fade away is crazy. He well, can Luca's, shoot from anywhere. Luca's big thing. He's got really good basketball IQ. His footwork is is great. He knows how to he knows how to move because he I don't think he can move very quick. Mm-hmm. He knows how to move to get himself space so that he can either take a shot. Or make you think he's going to take a shot and dish it out, or find a better look. Um, yeah, no, and he's just—he's also just really strong. He, yeah. Like he—he's got a mismatch down low on any any guard in the league, in yeah. my opinion. But yeah, man, he's good. What's your third one? Third one. Um, this one is kind of a uh, again not necessarily like top three, as in like oh this I think this is great. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of something that I thought was one of the top three most interesting stories in sports. Uh, Kaepernick was named the honorary captain for Michigan's uh, Blue and May's spring game. Colin Kaepernick did not go to Michigan. Went to Nevada, right? It's something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. <laughs> it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I know him and Harbaugh, they made a championship run together when he was coaching in San Francisco. Um, so I guess that, to me, it seems kind of like maybe he just felt bad for him. Here's the thing with Kaepernick. I know a lot of people, he's a controversial figure. I know a lot of people think he's not in the league because he kneeled. I don't believe that at all. You can do horrible shit in the NFL, like awful shit. And if you're good, you're still going to end up on a team. Oh, yeah. No, Ray Lewis good. was charged with double homicide, but he, he still had a spot. Um, I mean, Ray Rice, uh, Deshaun Watson <laughs> is facing 22 counts of 
sexual con- sexual assault, sexual misconduct, it's sexual whatever. assault. Twenty two counts, and he just got a fatter deal than he had before. He so, but the, then, well, he might. I mean, he might be suspended though, because he might still be suspended because like new cases are even. I mean, but cropping he, up about him too. Miles Garrett ripped the helmet off of someone's head and beat the shit out of him with it Here's the thing. in the middle of a game. Here's the he thing was, about that, He was though. only gone for a year. And this is, what's cra- this is what's crazy. So I went to high school with Miles Garrett. Um, I was a freshman when he was a senior at Martin High School in Arlington, Texas, where I live. The dude, he's like the most, he was like the most mild-mannered person I've ever like that was completely out of character. Like he he was like a good student. Like he fucking loved poetry and shit. He was like <laughs> a super nice like weird academic. That was completely out of character for him. So like bro, some something, something had to have happened to set him off. Oh, anyway. I just don't believe that. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Slightly off topic. Anyway, the point is you can do some pretty horrible horrible shit in the yeah. NFL. Oh yeah, definitely. And so I I don't think any team is not putting cap on a roster because he kneeled i don't think anyone gives a, sh- a shit about that honestly yeah. um he's just not that good and he was on his way out in san francisco when he did all that stuff anyway he always posts these videos of him like working out like he's trying to it's like dude just just hang up hang up the cleats there's nothing wrong with admitting like you yeah. had a career yeah i mean you, you still, still have a deal with nike endorsement deals and yeah, yeah commercials and you're a you're a social justice advocate. Yeah, there's a million stuff. ways to make like, money. Just move on. But yeah, I don't get why they made him the. And I feel like if you're at Michigan, you got to be like, why is this guy who didn't go here? Our maybe just for morale, honorary for the, captain. Maybe just for morale for the team, because, dude, I mean that that's that was as close as Michigan's gonna get, man. They're they're that's just true. they're a disappointment every year. They got so close. They, they got did. so close. I don't I don't think it's gonna be like that no. ever again, no. man. Until Harbaugh's gone and they find somebody better, but all respect to Jim Harbaugh, he's not—he's a good guy. No, Just he's a good guy. I don't think he's an elite football coaching talent, no. for sure. So he's got a big chin. He's got a very—he's got a nice—he's got kind of a nice jawline. He's yeah, got one of those that kind of. And then there's yeah. Maybe you play Superman or Batman or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could play Clark Kent. He's got the glasses. Um, anyway, moving on to our main segment. So obviously we have the spring game coming up this month. Um, that's what two two weeks from now today. Three? No, no. It's yeah, the no. 23rd. It's the twenty third. Three weeks. Oh yeah, three. Okay, yeah, yeah. So for our main segments for the next two episodes, we're going to be breaking down um, our predictions for the regular season games for OU for next year, and just kind of how we think those games are going to go factors at play so today we're doing uh week one through six and then next week we'll be doing um six through 12 and then the week after after we see the spring game we're going to go through and see kind of what we would change about our predictions based on what we saw so without further ado week one against utep um i'll let you go first we'll just do just give me your score prediction then i'll do mine and then we'll kind of talk about Ooh, score prediction against utep I'm going to go... UTEP wasn't awful last year, were they? I don't know. Or was I, it, I, or was it? UTEP. I don't watch UTEP unless we play them. Which, which was... Oh, no, that was UT San Antonio. That was, that was pretty UTSA good. UTSA was undefeated for okay. quite so, a bit of the season. Yeah, I don't know what UTEP did. I probably, like... Here's the thing. I don't want to give our offense too many points because I don't I don't know how explosive we're going to be under like I just don't know I don't know how explosive we're going to look I know our defense is going to be able to shut down and I, I know Venables is going to make it a point that shit teams are not scoring against us like you shut them down UTEP is it's a first week though under a new system so I'll give them a little bit yeah so let's say it'll end up being 21 to 42 OU Okay, I my score was really similar. I went forty two fourteen and OU win. Um, the only reason I allotted fourteen points to UTEP is just because obviously, like you said, it's going to be week one. Yeah, um, there's going to be a lot of not necessarily rust, but a lot of like first game Unknown. jitters that we're going to have to get out of the way, and everybody feels comfortable well, guys doing still, what they know how to still do. Learning the system, maybe, yeah. You know, there's some confusion here, there. Like you have to give. I mean, that's yeah. why you play a shit team the first week. Yeah, know? but I mean, it's UTEP. I, 
honestly, like, you know, we might give up a couple of stupid scores, but yeah. I mean, I think as we start running through the paces, our defense is going to get to the point where it's like they're not going anywhere. Um, I see a lot of three and outs happening in this game. And then yeah. I would say we're going to score more points, but I think it's going to get to a point where we're, our offense is going to start off slow. But then we're, you know, once we get to bordering that first and second quarter mark, we're going to start putting up a whole lot of points. And then instead of just trying to bury this team with like, and like just bringing in like second, third string, I think we're going to use the opportunity to kind of give the guys that are going to be playing the majority of the minutes this year the opportunity to to run through some scenarios like that yeah. we might experience later in the year. So, um, you know, we'll probably cap out around that 42 to 45 point mark. Yeah. Um, but just in terms of like what I think we're going to see from this game, um, outside zone up the wall. I think we're just going to cram it on them. Um, obviously, Dylan, we're going to let Dylan Gabriel sling it, but in terms of just volume, we're just going to outside zone the shit out of UTEP and just take advantage of the the talent difference there. Yeah. 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 I don't have anything else on that one. Um, next one, pretty kind of similar situation. Thing. Even uh, Probably an even, I, I, 55 to team. 10. 55 to 10 is my score in OU's favor. Yeah, I'd, I'll go... I'd say maybe like 55, 17, 14 if we give up a couple like of touchdowns. I mean, yeah, it's hard because in the fourth quarter when the guys... Because they're going to give the second strings... Mm-hmm. Some play time, and they're gonna they're gonna rotate stuff on these games because that's kind of just what you do. Um, it, it'll be a big win. I don't see it being particularly close. Again, I don't know that it'll be particularly telling either because yep. Kent State is not anything really. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, another big win for. Well, I say big win. It's Kent State. Yeah. Another win for us by a big margin. I think um, this one. I think we're gonna see a lot more opening up passes for Dylan Gabriel and by like like throwing the deep ball because I mean week one even though he's the most experienced guy on the field you can't help but be a little bit uncomfortable especially since it's a new school oh yeah um so I don't think we're gonna see like anything crazy from him I think week two is gonna be where it's like okay he's comfortable he's been through like that transition week in practice yeah where they're like okay we saw this in week one now this is how we're gonna play week two um so Throwing the deep ball, you know, scoring touchdowns to Marvin Mims, the Oise. Um, we're definitely going to start to see the offense get more and more dynamic. And then week three, Nebraska part two. What, what do you got for the score here? This one. So this one, I'm going to go a, a bigger margin than we had this past year when we barely eked our way mm-hmm. out of that game. I'm I'm gonna say relatively low scoring game though. Um, again, I'm gonna go twenty one or like twenty one or twenty four to fourteen. So I'm okay. gonna say we win by about ten. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So my score was twenty four to fourteen. I agree. With you. I think it's gonna be low scoring. Um, I think the offense is gonna be tested. Yeah, definitely but I, more so. They're gonna be they're gonna be tested because it's gonna be their first legitimate game against the Power Five team. Yeah. But I think we're still gonna see a lot of success. I think it's gonna be a quiet game, but the offense is still gonna look good. They're gonna look they're gonna look better than we looked last year, and Hopefully. score but score roughly the same amount of yeah. points. Um, and then I think the defense is gonna look a hell of a lot better. Um, Casey Thompson obviously is probably better in the passing game than Adrian Martinez, but... Adrian Martinez, though, had a hell of a game when he played against us. No, year. he did, but that's that's my thing is, like, we're probably looking at... We're probably looking at a more proficient passing offense for Nebraska, but we're also looking at, like, a completely gutted and revamped secondary for us. So yeah. I'm, giving, I'm, I'm giving them 14 points because, obviously, there will be some mistakes. Like, we're not going to have a mistake-free season... But um, I think late game, the defense is going to start to kind of clamp them down. Because, I mean, from what I've heard, Nebraska doesn't really have a running game right now. Okay. They brought in this tra- – <laughs> I've, I've already done – they brought in a transfer from A&M um, that's supposed to be part of their three-back rotation now. At A&M, he, he had – this last season, one rushing attempt for negative two yards. <laughs> I just thought that was funny that, like, they're bringing him in to be a part of their, their regiment there. I do, have, uh, I do have one more note. On Nebraska, while I was doing some research, 
they have a recruit <laughs> that they brought in and his his first name is the coolest the coolest yeah there's there's also a the coldest <laughs> oh yeah no, no no that's a, yeah okay sorry yeah it's the coldest really i thought that guy committed to lsu like i thought he is playing at lsu from what i mean unless it's like it's the coldest to ever do it no, his name is what? <laughs> no, there's a guy whose name is the coldest to ever do it, no, and he this, plays for LSU. This dude's name or he was is, committed to LSU. Like, uh, let me here. Let me get it pulled up. Shit. Um, oh, well, here, while you're finding that, I'll give you my last note on Nebraska. Um, but yeah, I think just late game, their defense isn't gonna like their their defense is not going to look near as prolific as it did last year against us because of the new tempo. Like we're just going to be moving too fast, have too many threats all over the field. So I think we're going to swarm them, and uh, it's only going to be, in my opinion, it's it's going to be a slim margin, but it's going to look like it shouldn't have been that slim of a margin. The coldest Crawford, that's him. Oh, does he play at LSU? No. Oh, really? Yeah, he signed in Nebraska. Okay, guys, breaking recruiting news here. <laughs> Decolda, his middle name is to ever do it. Oh, is Decolda, it yeah, Decolda's to ever do it Crawford, wide receiver, um, committed to Nebraska, for those of you who don't know. Yeah, yeah no, I remember this. that guy was like all over ESPN because yeah, of his name. Signed. But he, uh, ever, I, I thought he was going to LSU. No, he signed in Nebraska. Well, there you have it. Nebraska got Decolda's to ever do it Crawford. Um, I don't think it's going to help him. <laughs> I don't think he's the, the coldest to ever do it. Um, but, you know, more power to him. Anything else on that game? No. Nope. Cool. All right. Week four, Kansas State, one of our kryptonite games, yeah, typically. This one always scares me. Um, and it's funny because Kansas State never has good recruiting. Um, you, they never, but they're just, they are play tough. They play old school football. And historically, over the past five years, that's been our weakness. Tough teams that will come up and pop us in the mouth, we didn't recover well. I don't think that'll be the case this mm -hmm. year. I think we're, we already have a mentally tougher team than we've had any of the years on, under Lincoln Riley. And so I think we're going to be able to go and match Kansas State's toughness and then also have the talent to put them away. So yeah. I still think this will maybe be kind of like Nebraska, a little bit of a grinded out game, um, very defensive, um, slower. I think the, the, the pace of the game will be slower. I think there's going to be a lot of running, keeping the ball on the ground, kind of a time of possession battle. Um, so I see us winning this one, say like 21 to 10. Okay, well... I, I have it a little bit higher scoring. Okay. So I, I, I'm saying 35 to 24. So okay. 11 yeah, point is, difference. Yeah. And this is why. This is the point in the season where our offense is really going to get into that flow state, I think. And th this should be the mentality of the OU team. And I think this is probably it. I think the coaches should probably talk to them exactly like every team in the Big 12, every team in the Big 12 probably has the mindset going into this season that this is our best chance to have a dominant win over an OU team. So our mindset needs to be that of the underdog and be like, <laughs> we got, speaking of dogs, we got, we got Zeus over here stretching, hi, coming Zeus. to say hi. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the mindset of the OU team needs to be that of the yeah. underdog and just say, you know what, if we don't give every team our best shot this season in conference yeah. play, we're gonna lose a shit ton of games. And I think that's probably what the coaches have instilled in them. Um, so that mindset plus the talent that we have, I think this is where we're going to start to see it come out. Um, it is a concerning game for me, though. It's always a because game. Because they're going to have Adrian Martinez now who's proven that he can, that he can run like crazy. Yeah. And then they have Deuce Vaughn coming back, who was hands down one of the best running backs in college football last year. So they're going to have a really dangerous backfield. And they're always um, tough. They just always, they're always Kansas tough. State always puts out tough yeah. teams. Their defensive line in particular is really going to be really tough. And then obviously the O line's a big question mark for us. So that that right there plus Deuce Vaughn is what's really scary to me. But I think I think the the mindset that we're going to have plus the talent is going to make a difference. Obviously our O line hopefully looks a hell of a lot better this year. So yep. still giving us the win, but this is going to be a tough week for sure. Week five, TCU. 
This, I think, will be a bit higher scoring of a game. Um, TCU's defense is obviously not going to be what Kansas State's is, and especially now that they're under Sonny Dykes' um, control, it's going to be a TCU's going to shift to being a much more offense-heavy program. Whereas under um, Gary Patterson, they were more of a defensive-focused program. Yeah. Um, I think you know they're they're doing basically the same thing that we're doing though this year. A complete culture shift, a complete three hundred and sixty. Um, the difference is they don't have the talent that we have. They don't have the brand that we have. And they don't have, they're not getting the level of coach that we got. So I think this one will not be particularly close. I'm going to say like 35 or 38 to 10 or 14. Okay. Something like yeah. that. I'm going to go, mine was 38, 14. Um, obviously, yeah, new new coach under, 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 under Sonny Dykes. Under Sonny Dykes. Um, I... I think he will be for, for for TCU's needs right now. I think he's going to be an improvement on Patterson, but not immediately. Like it's going to be no, it's going a few be years a time before. Yeah, but the interesting thing about TCU being a more defensive oriented team under Patterson is like I always when we play them at least I always like their offense looks. Maybe that's because our defense was so bad, but I feel like their offense was always way more prolific than their defense was. Um, yeah, but yeah, this game. Not really worrisome for me at all. No, um, I think I think our defense will be able to do a good job of. I think um, a better than good job. Of, I of think swallowing. Um, yeah. What, who's Max the, Duggan? No, Duggan's not there anymore. Yeah. Is he? Is He's he? The, back, is he yeah. still their guy? Yeah. Duggan's Over the guy. Uh, Morrison. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Fuck him. I don't like Max Duggan with his orange hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck well, out of here. Yeah. So how, how old is the dude's gonna be in his thirties now? He's Dude, I have no idea. Ever. He looks like a kid, though. Still, he looks like he He's looks been super there for young. Like, so I feel that. I feel that way about Aaron, uh, Adrian Martinez, though. I feel like how how many Adrian years? Martinez, dude. He's on like a seven. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Is he is he going? Is he getting his doctorate? Like what? It's cr- like eligibility has changed so much. Like dudes can literally keep playing. As well, the COVID year didn't help. The COVID year didn't help yeah. at all. No, but I mean, yeah. So it's it, Max Duggan at quarterback. He's Average. I mean, Very I'm not going to say he's bad, but he's he's not amazing. They have a broken up O line. Their defense isn't going to be um, what that's, it was back in like 2013, 2014 when they were like almost a playoff contender. So it's crazy that that Duggan's going to get the start over Morris though, because I thought he looked. I thought Chandler Morris looked way better. Yeah, I mean, Duggan threw three touchdowns against us. Well, our, our defense was shit last year, though. It yeah, it was. I mean, you're our not secondary, wrong. our secondary was awful. Yeah, but anyway, in terms of like, yeah, in terms of like middle of the season games, um, TCU no. to me is going to be like butter, yeah. um, especially considering what we have the week after that, uh, which brings us to our next game, week six, the Red River rivalry, the Texas sh- showdown. You can't call it the shootout anymore. Which thing is the stupidest thing in the world? Yeah. It's but. it's the shootout showdown Red River rivalry, Texas versus OU, Week Six Cotton Bowl Cotton Bowl in Dallas in Dallas. If you if you've never been, I won't be there because tickets are too fucking they're, they're expensive. expensive. And it's I don't know. So so like he said, we live in Dallas, or I live I live like in Dallas, Dallas. The Cotton Bowl, if you've never been there, is in the middle of the fucking hood, like the absolute. So yeah. not necessarily a place that you want to be like after dark. Yep. Um, the fairgrounds is like really weird. It's like fairgrounds, and then outside of that, it's parking just, is terrible. Parking is terrible. The whole thing smells like barn. Yeah, it's and not like fun. farm animals because they have they have literal farm animals there. Um, the and, food is really expensive and not that great. They raise the price of the tickets. Did you they, see? Yeah, I think uh, they're like what were they before fifty cents, and now a ticket's a full buck. Which I mean, it just changes like the vet, but it's yeah. like bro, it's like it, it, inflation. six tickets for like three fried Oreos. Yeah, that's six bucks, and and tickets to the game are three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's and that's to sit up in the nosebleeds. Yeah, just um, watch on ESPN. Yeah, All right, sit at home ABC. in the nice air conditioning, nice beer. Yeah, some food, go some to a wings. Bar. It's fun, fun game to go to a sports bar. We might have to go to Happiest Hour. Yeah, go watch the Happiest Hour. Um, anyway, but anyway, uh, OU Texas, your uh, score. This was going to be close. It's always close. Um, I'm going to go... I'm 
I'm I'm calling a three point game. I'm still not sure exactly what the what the over under is going to be. Um, I think it, it'll definitely be over sixty, but I'm not sure if it will be over eighty. I really don't know. I, I'm going to have to see kind of what our defense looks like and then watch them. The good thing about that, it's at, it's at the perfect point of the season because we're going to ha- you have some film actually on the team that you're playing and you have some film with them playing conference games. Everyone's kind of settled into their offense. Defensives have figured out their schemes yep. and you can you can game plan better whereas like against like for instance, like UTEP or Kent State first week, there's no film. You're looking at maybe what they're doing last year to get an idea of what their what their game plan might look like. Mm-hmm. But you're not actually seeing the players that are that are going to be playing. So that's the good thing about us playing Texas when we're when we're playing them. Like we're both not necessarily peaking at that point, but we've kind of settled into our seasons. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it'll be a close game though. Very yeah. Close game. No, this is going to be. This is gonna be a big mom like this is gonna be a big uh, fork in the road for for OU because I mean obviously if we if we beat Kansas State and beat TCU we win our first two um, conference games hopefully dominantly um, that's gonna that's gonna create a whole bunch of momentum that with this game we can either double or, or slow down severely yeah. so I'm going 35 28 seven point difference OU victory. Um, just a few of the factors that I think are going to be at play in this game. Um, obviously, we know nothing about our new defense, but no. this is going to be, to me, the game where we figure out, like, are they, are, this year, Is it legit? are yeah. they good enough? Because Quinn Ewers, I'm not, I don't think he's going to be amazing, but he's definitely not going to be bad. No. The dude can throw the ball. Let's just be honest. He can throw the ball. Xavier Worthy had, he's going to have a good game, I think. He's. He will never play another football game as good as he played against us last year. That kid will, in his pro career, in his call, he will never play a football game like he had against us last year. So um, he's definitely going to be a threat. Um, definitely the best receiver on the team, and you know who know him and Quinn Ewers might have some, might have some juice going there. Um, Texas O line is going to be decent. They're not going to be amazing, but they're going to be decent, and. Um, yeah, I just think the difference maker here is going to be our run game yeah. and then Dylan Gabriel's experience. So yeah. so it's going to be – the big thing is going to be how how much is Dylan Gabriel's experience and his poise and the fact that he's been in so many of these types of situations, how big of a difference is that going to make in these big games, and then how good is our defense actually. One thing to take into consideration, though, I think about Dylan Gabriel – this will be the biggest game of his career mm-hmm. up to that point because he's never he's never played in a rivalry game like OU Texas. It's a completely throw any other big game, even bowl game that you've played in, throw it out because it's it's a completely different atmosphere. That is I mean, true. This is where this is where people either show that they're made of something different mm-hmm. or that they can't rise up to the competition. I mean, we saw that with. We saw that last year, um, in, in the year before, Spencer Rattler struggled in this game despite having good stats and you know a, a decent year bef- prior to it. He struggled both years in this game because it's a different atmosphere, yeah. and it will rattle you if you're not composed. And so we're going to see. This is really going to test and show. Like, does he have that Baker chip on his shoulder? Yeah. It does he have that level of composure? Does he have that level of leadership to where he can take his guys, who many of them have not played in a, in a game like this, um, you know, with, with the transfers that we have in and, you know, people graduating, new people coming in, is he going to be able to come in and lead in an atmosphere like that? Yeah. And no, I mean, at, bring us a, as far as atmospheres go, yeah, completely different from anything that he ever saw at UCF. But I guess my question is like, as a person who started at U, a three-year starter, not a three-year player, but a three-year starter, will he have the ability to just keep his composure Obviously, play with a chip on his shoulder, but just this is just another football game. There's another football game that I've got to win. I don't think you can play and this not game. get rattled. I don't think you can play this game like that, though. You can't just play it as another football game that you have to win. You have to respect and match the energy of the arena, right? So another football game that you have to win is us. You know, I think what do we we go to Tech 
this this year. Yeah, yeah, okay, so. so that's another football game, right? Hostile environment. Tech doesn't like us. They throw frozen burritos and shit at you. Um, <laughs> it's fucking, tortillas and batteries. Fucking bombs. Uh, I hate Texas Tech fans. I'm just gonna, gonna go. There goes our light. It's, okay. it's all good. Let's just finish it out. We're almost done. It's, uh, oh, I know why. It's because my. Uh, well. <laughs> you, you could fucking help me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Sorry, laptop died. Um, we'll have to cut that out. Yeah. Um, no, fuck Texas Tech. I hate them. Yeah. I think they have the worst fans. But that's that's a game where you have to go. Okay, this is just another game. Keep your composure, right? There's there's not there's not something greater at play that you have to rise up to. Texas is a completely different monster. It's like playing in a playoff game, right? You can't just not be rattled. You actually have to match the energy of the event. Bedlam's the same way. You have to be able to match the energy of that event. Yep. And that's where people like Baker were able to come. I know they're just going to think this. We might as well rename this the, the Baker the Better Podcast. The Baker the Better Podcast. I like that. It's got a nice <laughs> ring to it. Uh, but he was, able to, he was able to match that energy. And, and he sometimes even bring more energy, and that's important in a leader. And so we're, that's what yeah. we're going to see out of Dylan Gabriel. Does he have that ability? Because if he does, then maybe, we, maybe we're able to make a playoff run this year. Yeah, no, he's, he's going to have to ball. Um, beating Texas is going to be a huge. I mean, I think this is going to be another one of those years where Texas is put on a pedestal way higher than what the team actually deserves Probably. to be at. So. Um, I think by the time we get to them, it's going to be a point where it's going to be very beneficial to the team to have like a, a good win over that Texas team. But I think Dylan Gabriel is more than up to the task. I think just like last year, we're going to run the ball down up the wazoo, yeah. cram it down their throats. Like last year, they had B. John Robinson, who was you know supposed to be a Heisman contender, right? And we outrushed him with Kennedy Brooks. Not not anything against Kennedy Brooks, but like. Not our most explosive guy we've ever had. No. More of like a chess player type runner. Um, and we outrushed one of the best running backs in the country with him just because of what we're able to do as a team. So I think we're definitely going to expand on that. I think we're just going to cram the ball down their throats. Um, I don't think they're going to have an answer for our offense late in the game. And I think our defense is going to not shut them out, but they're going to have a few drives where they just swallow them. Um, and I think that's going to be the difference maker. So I'm giving, yeah. giving OU that 35-28 win. And... Uh, Move on to the second half of the season. Move on to the second half of the season, which we'll be covering in our next episode. Um, that's actually that's all we got today. Um, no take it or leave it segment. Uh, I think we're I think we're running a little bit a little bit low on time here anyway. But that's all we have. We'll see y'all back for episode ten on our second video podcast, and uh, see y'all later. Boomer sooner. Boomer. Boomer. Uh. Yeah.